Hello, my name is Jason Miller. I am a ServiceNow consultant currently at the Walt Disney Company. I currently handle the majority of Walt Disney's supplier SLAs uh, within the ServiceNow platform. Uh, today, what I'd like to do is respond to a request that was on the ServiceNow community. Uh, it was entitled SLA with many stop conditions by Joyce uh, Wangasi. I hope I'm pronouncing that last name correctly. Um, and uh, basically Joyce had asked, uh, I need to configure an SLA um, with a specific group and she wanted priority one. And there were three different conditions. It says four stages, but to me this is really three SLAs. Um, and the, it looked like that she wanted one SLA, but I think that you have to chop it up into three. So I'm going to go ahead and address it and show the three that I created in response to this. So the first one says that uh, we want basically an acknowledgement of the ticket uh, within 15 minutes. So I believe this is incident because we're talking about um, a ticket here. So um, create. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create an incident, and I'll talk about the three SLAs that I've created. So this is the acknowledge SLA, the solution communicated SLA, and the resolution SLA. Uh, so basically, it said assignment group and priority. I just use priority five, but uh, it's easy to change to priority one. That's not a problem um, within the definition. I used IT finance cab one as my group. I will now hit save. So when it's assigned to this group, and I'll review the definition in just one second, uh, we'll see that down here in the related list, the task SLA tab, that the acknowledge SLA does fire. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what's uh, wh what we had to do to make this sausage, so to speak. So um, acknowledge SLA is a title. I did a condition type of default. Uh, what default does, and there's really two types, it's called condition base, actually, default and simple. Default says the entire start condition must be true, the cancel condition must be false, and the uh, stop condition must be false also for this thing to fire. So basically uh, what we're saying here is that the assignment group has to be IT finance cab one, the priority has to be five planning, and then active equals true. And then we'll note that when the cancel conditions, when to cancel is start, conditions are not met. The reason I added active is true is because if uh, we cancel the ticket, uh, the SLA will cancel um, if it does not meet the stop condition before that. So um, the way to think of it is it's kind of a race and that after we um, the, the gun fires, the, the SLA starts running, starts running to towards its goal. If it hits that stop condition, um, it will go ahead and be more completed. And then after that, um, there's no real way to cancel it. So the start condition basically says, okay, start running. And then if any one of these three changes, um, then we'll consider it that the start conditions are not met and we'll go ahead and cancel. So right now we have our uh, SLA that is fired on our incident over here. Uh, we can take a look at our stop condition. So it says here, assigned to is not empty. And then also what I did was I add the assignment group again. Um, and the reason for that is that sometimes just uh, the system behavior is something to understand because ServiceNow is a tool that can be configured many different ways. Um, we need to understand what the record behavior is and how humans interact with this form. So since these, uh, these fields up here are not really locked down, marked read only, um, and also to note that incident is probably the table that will cause um, I would say 90% of your, your issues with uh, SLA configuration um, just because the, the, um, the form is so fluid, whereas with a requested item, uh, you might have a one-to-one -one relationship between the assignment group and the actual work being performed inside of either the actual requested item itself or the tasks, so it's easier um, to go ahead and configure. So assignment group um, is IT Finance Cab 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and assign it to Abe Lincoln here. And we'll notice that the solution communicated to client box pops up. I created this field um, on the incident table basically because um, I wanted there to be a way to note that the solution has been communicated to the client and I wanted a human to touch the form and say yes it has. But before we get to that we'll mark this save because it's been assigned. And now we can scroll down 
And we'll see here, our Acknowledge SLA has been marked completed. Uh, looks like it took about three minutes on the business elapsed time. And now we'll go to our Solution Communicated SLA. And we'll see our start condition here. It looks pretty similar. Okay, so now we have a sign to is not empty, and then our active is true. Um, we would also have to add, I guess if we want to do it by priority, we could add priority equals five, because that's what I noted in the previous one. And that would be also important for the, the cancel conditions. And one thing to note is that um, if the priority changes, your SLA will change and then it will fire another one in this scenario, mainly because the start condition um, has to match all four of these um, to be true. So just make sure that you understand that when you're, you're uh, creating these cancel conditions. You can also change it to make your own cancel conditions and make it specific. But for right now, I'm just gonna make it simple and say if any one of these four changes, it should cancel. So now there are no pause conditions on this. And basically all we have to do is answer that box yes for the, for the solution that's been communicated to the client. I could also add on if I wanted to to make myself safe. Um, the assignment group is IT finance, uh, let's see here, tab one, just to make sure that that's correct. And maybe we'll say at a group level, we just want to you know, keep, it, keep it there at the group level and uh, uh, whoever it's assigned to, um, it doesn't matter as long as someone from the group has, um, has communicated that because our acknowledge SLA has already um, been met at that point. So um, I will go ahead and do the honors of marking this yes. And we'll click save here. And now our third and final SLA, the resolution SLA should fire. So we have our resolution SLA, it's currently in progress. Um, and now we can go ahead and take a look at the construction of this one. Uh, we'll note that the condition type is default and solution communicated to client is yes and it's still in progress, so active is true. I like using active is true um, also because instead of state, a lot of people like to put state in their start condition. I don't and basically, um, because the states uh, can change um, throughout the life cycle of the, of the tool um, within your enterprise. So um, people like to add different states and I don't like to trigger off of it. Active equals true just seems like a very binary field. And I like to use conditions that um, from the start that are, that are pretty much non, uh, if possible, um, are not gonna be fiddled with by humans. So that way the machine can go ahead and just trigger this thing. Um, and then also, I, I forgot to note earlier that uh, the durations um, that Joyce wanted were, um, I believe it was 15 minutes, 45 minutes, and six hours. So we can take a look at these. So I did 15 minutes here. I did 45 minutes here for the duration. And then I did six hours um, for the resolution duration. Um, and then uh, one thing to note is that I did no schedule. So basically it's just going to run 24-7. Um, and then it's going to be dependent on the caller's time zone. So whoever is in that caller's box, uh, meaning the, um, if we look up here, yes, the caller right here, um, that's going to be when the actual time or the time zone that it's based on. So just because the client's expectations um, that uh, I feel anyway that, that, that should be reflected. Um, and if your team has a different schedule, then, you know, you could go ahead and th there's another YouTube segment that I created about creating schedules. Um, so that way you can go ahead and create your own for your, for your own team. Uh, let's see here. Now, I did add pause conditions based on state. So I said if it's on hold or waiting for a vendor or pending supplier, it's one of these, then I want to go ahead and pause. And then if it goes into resolve state, just go ahead and complete. So if I go ahead and let's just go ahead and put it in hold, on hold right now and just make sure it pauses, we can test that out. And then sure enough, we'll see here that it's paused, which is good. Test as well. And now I have figured out the solution. I can go ahead and resolve it and I've uh, communicated it to the client so everything's good to go. I'll hit save. 
them out and might ask me for closure codes, but more importantly, <clears throat> we see here our resolution SLA has been completed. Um, it has not breached, it was met within the amount of time. We'll see here it noted the business pause duration of 22 seconds. Um, and yeah, I think that we're good to go on those, those requirements there. Um, I think that's pretty much it. And I'll go ahead and respond to Joyce on Monday since today's the fourth, so probably on the sixth, I'll go ahead and put it out there or I'll try to put it um, maybe a little bit later today. And yeah, we've just unlocked the power of service now, as I like to say. Thank you and have a great day.